The All Blacks have made a bold call selecting Scott Barrett ahead of Sam Kane for Saturday's Rugby World Cup semi-final against England in Yokohama. As reported by RNZ this morning, Barrett will start in the number six jersey with Adi Savia at seven and Kieran Reid at eight, pushing Kane to the bench. It's Barrett's first ever start at Blindside and he's doing it in a World Cup semi-final. The change also means Patrick Tuipolotu will be the reserve lock. The rest of the All Blacks team is unchanged from the quarterfinal against Ireland. Coach Steve Hansen has just wound up the press conference and says picking Barrett at blindside flanker was not a slight on Sam Kane, but a tactical move, so he didn't want to give too much away. We're not going to go into too much depth about that because otherwise we're giving Eddie some information that he'll probably be able to work out pretty quickly himself, so I'd rather he have to work it out, but obviously it's strategic. It's not on form. Sam Kane's playing lovely rugby. However, um, we've made some decisions around what we want to do and how we want to play, and that means we've made that change because of that. Sammy's in good form, but we've got a strategy that says we should pick Scott Barrett and bring Sam off the bench. The build-up to the test was ignited on Monday when England coach Eddie Jones fired a volley of verbal barbs the All Blacks way, including claims of spying. Hanson says it's all part of a game being played on the sidelines that includes reporters. Look, Eddie and I both know all fear and love and war. And there's nothing better in war than throw a wee distraction out that you know you guys can't resist. Best clickbait in the world, someone's spying on us. He didn't call it us. He's very deliberate in not doing that. He talked about it being somebody else. Probably the same bloke that photoed, videoed us during the same time we were there. But everyone's jumped on it and he's been successful in getting the clickbait he wants. But Hanson didn't shy away from playing the same game, responding to Eddie Jones's quip that the pressure would be chasing the All Blacks down the street. That same pressure's running down the same street that he's on. And he's trying again to take that pressure off. You know, he's, he's trying to take the pressure off his own side by saying, getting everyone to talk to us about pressure. And again, smart move, but you know, I'm not buying into it. Our players aren't buying into it. We, we know we're under pressure. We don't need Eddie to tell us that. But what yeah. he needs to work out is what's England going to do about the pressure they're under. Because they'll have memories about a a tournament four years ago and didn't go that good. So they'll be under immense pressure themselves. We're joined live now by rugby reporter Joe Porter in Tokyo. So Joe, Scott Barrett's selection at Blindslide, how much a, a surprise is that? You had Hanson there saying it's strategic, it's not, not based on Sam Kane's form. So what's going on here? Yeah, well, not a surprise for us. We knew this last night. In fact, I reported on it this morning that Scott Barrett was set to be selected at blindside for his first ever start for the All Blacks. Look, it's all about size and strength and power in the forward pack. Scott Barrett is a natural lock. He usually plays lock, so he's obviously a better line-out option than Sam Kane is. He's also a bigger body for the physical bruising encounter that the All Blacks are expecting from this English forward pack. He's better in the scrum. He provides more power. He's better at the breakdown and cleaning out and clearing bodies out of the way to give the quick ball to the All Blacks that the All Blacks need to win this game. The English forward pack is a big, brutish forward pack. They're going to try and slow down the All Blacks ball, suffocate them, so to speak. Scott Barrett is there to clean them all out of the way to make sure that that doesn't happen and that halfback Aaron Smith gets quick ball out to the back line because the All Blacks have the advantage in the back line. They have some guys that can really set this game alight and they will look to use all kinds of attacking variations to break this English defence down. The English have been very, very strong on defence, almost impregnable when they beat the Wallabies in the quarterfinals. That is where they will look to attack this game. That is where they know they are very, very strong. The All Blacks want fast ball. The All Blacks want clean ball out of the rucks. And they don't want anyone getting in the way of that. So Scott Barrett, his, his big physical body, his physical presence, he's a niggly player. He likes the combative stuff. He's going to get in there and show these English forwards exactly what he's made of. And so that's why he's been picked ahead of Sam Kane. Just a bigger presence to fight brute strength with brute strength against these English forwards. OK, so there's obviously a huge amount of interest in this game. Was that reflected at, at the press conference? 
Yes, indeed it was. You should have seen the press conference. I've never seen one quite so packed. Hundreds of journalists there. There were not enough seats. People lining up the walls, all behind the cameras, at least 30 cameras there as well. So many journalists there are focusing on this game because it is huge. It is what people consider to be the veritable World Cup final. The two best teams at the tournament. The All Blacks, of course, seeking to make history and go one step closer to winning an unprecedented third straight title. And the English, like Steve Hansen has said, plenty of pressure on them. They didn't make it out of the group stage at the last World Cup, which they hosted. And that has been their goal ever since under Eddie Jones is getting to the World Cup final and proving that they can play knockout rugby. This is an immense game. Both sides are incredibly confident. Both sides are very in very, very good form. Both sides have great forward packs, great set piece and some decent back lines too. So it's going to be a monumental clash and no wonder there's so much interest and hype surrounding it and no wonder there's been so many mind games back and forth between the two teams because there is a lot riding on this game for both teams of course. I'm loving the back and forward between the coaches there. I see Hanson couldn't resist taking the bait today. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely not, and fair enough too. Eddie Jones is, is the master. He's got the silver tongue. Of course, on, earlier during the week, he really set this game alight with his claims of spying, like you've mentioned, talking about how all the pressure was on the All Blacks and there was no pressure whatsoever on his side, but there is a lot of pressure on the English, and Steve Hansen was quick to acknowledge it. The All Blacks' strength here is that they're used to dealing with this kind of pressure. Every time the All Blacks go out to play, they're expected to win. Every time they attend the World Cup, they're expected to win. So the internal pressure on them is huge. They know within themselves that they want to put out a performance that they're proud of and a performance that is a winning performance and they know the external expectations on them are ridiculously high too. That's something the English don't have experience with. There's no one in, the, in this English side that has played in a World Cup semi-final or final before, whereas there's a whole host in this All Blacks team that have not only played in semi-finals and finals but won two World Cups. So in terms of preparation, the All Blacks certainly have the edge because they know exactly what to expect when it comes to these big pressure matches. Thanks Joe. that's Joe Porter joining us live from Tokyo.